Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris, and today we're going to play with a few different light modifiers. Let's do this real quick. Now, all these light modifiers are for these speed lights. This is just an Amazon basic speed light. Real cheap, really easy to use. But we're just going to take some sample shots, and well, you be the judge of which light modifier you like the best. Now, the first shot here is going to be just the speed light pointed straight at me. It's not the most flattering. If you were in a group or something like that, you might want to put the diffusion, well, the wide angle spreader on there take a picture as long as you're a good distance away this is probably your best bet for a group but the next one is bouncing straight up into the ceiling and letting it fill it in the one after that we're just going to bounce it to the ceiling and also bounce it to the wall to try to get some side lighting you know a little little different effect here now the next one we're going to do is going to be straight at the camera again with this little teeny tiny soft box on here just to diffuse the light just a little bit and then we're gonna use this little, I think it's called a Stofen. Now, you're not really supposed to shoot it straight at, it's made for more bouncing the light and then a little bit comes out just to have a little kicker, a little catch light in your eye. That's also what this little white card is for, is for a kicker, just to give you a little catch light in your eye. Now, the next one, this is a knockoff of the Gary Fong light sphere, I think it is. Either way, it's made to mainly bounce light off of ceiling and then also project some forward to illuminate you give the catch light in the eye and everything like that so you kind of see what you like now the next picture is going to be with this little cheap inexpensive it's reflective on the inside it, it, i guess it's kind of a soft box it's also collapsible you can break it down real small put it in a little pouch it's not too bad to have in your camera bag it, it folds down to this size so in that respect if you just kind of needed something fast, you wanted a small setup, it's kind of a way to go. So you'd be the judge. If you had a couple of these together with a couple speed lights, you know, so you have your main, your fill light, and stuff like that, this is a pretty decent option. You can also use it for a hair light, which we'll do later on today. Now this one here is going to be with this one. You just pretty much take your flash and angle it so that the optical sensor can see your camera's flash. Throw this in here, on here. It's going to fire in a slave mode, illuminate this huge soft box. Remember, the larger the light source, the softer it is. The closer the light source to you, the more rapid fall off you're going to have, and then you're not really going to be illuminating your background at all. I do like using this, but then again, it's also very big and have it effective. You want to get it up high, so you're kind of limited in the space that you have to where something a little bit smaller, I can get this up higher, get the angle I want, but it's not gonna be as diffused as this thing here. Now for the last few pictures here, I'm using this as my main light. I have one of these as a hair light, and then I also have another inexpensive flash that we'll review in a different video. Kind of behind me, giving me some separation from the background, kind of just backlighting me, or it's off to a side, so it's more like a, a kicker light if you want. But it's just gonna give me a little bit of separation. Now all this was done in my living room, no real ambient light in the room or anything like that. I did have a big window open for some of the shots, but with the shutter speed I was using, it wasn't gonna pick up any of the available light. Now that's the thing too, when you adjust your shutter speed, the slower the shutter speed, the more ambient light you're gonna let into your photo. The faster the shutter speed, the less ambient light you're gonna you know, let into your photo. So keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. If you're like, well, hey, wait a minute. I I'm getting too much of the background light that I don't want in there. Well, raise your shutter speed up a little bit and then you adjust your aperture and uh, aperture is a little more for the the flash power itself and of course adjust your flash power as needed iso is going to adjust both your ambient light and your flash but we'll go over that stuff in a different video in more detail the point of this video was just to kind of compare all these different modifiers so you can kind of see the difference because i have a little bit of a collection here and i like buying inexpensive modifiers to see what they do it's kind of fun now the next step is to well, maybe build my own flash or speed light modifier but that's for a different day for a different video wow for some reason i'm like losing my voice i don't know what's going on here i haven't, I haven't even i've barely talked today but just the same like i said you be the judge of which photo which you know light you like the best and what modifier is good for you it all depends what kind of shooting you're doing if you're doing you know birthday parties maybe weddings and stuff like that this type of option might be better it, this might be better if you have lower ceilings this might be better if you have really high ceilings because you're gonna get that flash right on the person but it's gonna soften up and something a little bit larger might be a little bit better as well 
This might be good just to throw on a flash and stick it in the corner of the room just to brighten up the room behind the person if you want the room as part of the photo. There's a lot of different things you can do with this stuff. This might be good just for doing headshots or portraits or something like that to where you're not going to set this up for a birthday party or a wedding or you're not going to move around with this thing. This is mainly going to be where you're shooting. It's going to be in your studio, in your makeshift studio. This might be good for something on the fly when you need something just a little bit more and this is nice and portable and handy. You'd be the judge. That's, that was basically the reasoning for me buying this stuff in case you didn't notice. Anyways, again, I'm doing way too much rambling. I'm definitely going to lose my voice. So I'll see you on the next one. Oh, I almost forgot. If you're new here, I definitely welcome you to the channel and I, I thank you for subscribing and checking out well, the photography playlist because, well, obviously this is a photography video and there's a lot of other videos to well watch and a lot of videos I'm going to make on photography because I do enjoy it. It's one of my passions, hobbies, side hustles, whatever you want to call it. It's something I enjoy doing and I might as well share some stuff with you and we'll learn together and along the way and you'll find out I ramble too much like I am again. So I'll see you on the next one. I can't get out of here. There's too much in the way. Watch my whole studio comes falling apart right now. <laughs>I'm gonna do a video on just using regular shoot-through umbrellas with speed lights. I did a video on using continuous light with shoot-through umbrellas and such. Check that out.